Okay, good morning, guys. Sorry for the for the massive delay. My uh, my my mouse wasn't working, and then my headset wasn't working, so I was trying to figure it out what's going on. So, anyways, but I got you guys in on Zoom. So, uh, what's going on with the mouse again? Okay. Okay, hopefully that works. Looks like it's working. Okay, let's start with the uh, land acknowledgements. We acknowledge we are uh, hosting a land from the saga of Anoshabi and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Metis, and Inuit people. So today is day nine. Uh, we are starting unit four, which is trigonomic, trigonomic functions. Basically your Soka Toa and your sine and your cosine and, and all that stuff we're starting today. Uh, the test that was given out, it was given out uh, yesterday, right? It's due today, 11.59. So, do today 11:59. Okay. Um, so let's go to content. Let me actually look at it from a student point of view, so I make sure I can see or I can I see what you guys see. Okay. So remember, uh, what's important is you got to get this test in today. There's a quiz. I got to make sure the quiz is there. I don't, I don't think the quiz is there, but the quiz is secondary. This needs to get in get in before the quiz, okay? Uh, yes, the quiz is due today, but the test is more important. So we have to figure out, you know, you guys got to prioritize what you're going to hand in first, right? The quiz needs to be handed, but you got to work on the test, okay? And this And there's worksheets for this. Which again, they're not for marks, so you can do it. Don't you don't have to hand it in because it's not for marks. Okay, so let's go on to content. Okay, you guys can see this. Okay, there's a video, and then you guys can see the assignment that's due today. Uh, let us go into the first lesson, the video. This video is for this, by the way. Okay, so I believe you guys know Sokotoa. Well, I mean, you guys should know Sokotoa, but it's here. You can watch those videos, find the angle, and find the side. Okay, I won't go through that. I will go through the sine law and the cosine law. Because cosine law and sine law, you guys, it's probably new for you guys. But the Sokotoa, you can go through that. You know, so let's go through the sine law and how we use the sine law to find the unknown side. Okay, let's go through that video. Okay, so here's the first lesson for chapter eight. Um, chapter eight is on the trigonometry of acute triangles. Okay, so chapter seven, we worked with right triangles and we used Sokotoa. We used the sine, cos, and tan ratios to find missing angles and sides. Okay, when we're working with acute triangles, um, we can't use Sokotoa anymore. We can't use those triggers. Okay, so the reason why you're using sine, uh, the sine law and the cosine law is because you're using it to find these type of triangles. Remember the 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 Sokotoa 
right, was only for right angle triangles, right? And now you're dealing with triangles that are not right angled. These triangles are oblique, or uh, basically they have angles not 90 degrees, okay? So acute angles, they're less than 90, right? You can see that. So that's why you're using the sine law, okay? And then also you're gonna use, either use a sine law or use a cosine law. So that's why. Ratios. What we can use are um, two laws that we'll learn in this chapter, the sine law and the cosine law, okay? Those will help us find missing angles and sides for acute triangles. So this lesson is on section 8.1 using the sine law, okay? What the sine law is, the sine law um, is right here, okay? And this is a law that shows the relationship between the sides and the opposite angles in an acute triangle, okay? So if here's angle A, I know side A is here. Uh, what the law tells me is that the relationship between um, these ratios are all equal. So the ratio of the length of side A divided by the sine of angle A is the exact same as the ratio of side B divided by the sine of angle B, which is also equal to the length of side C divided by the sine of angle C, okay? The ratio of each side to its opposite angle, those ratios are all equivalent, okay? So sine law, the ratio of each side to its opposite angle is equal, okay? So A over sine A is equal to um, B divided by sine B, which is equal to C divided by sine of C. Those ratios are all equal. So even though we have, there's three ratios in the sine law, and then you see three parts, you only ever use two parts at a time, okay? So we might use these two, or we might use these two, or we might use these two, okay? It all depends on what information is given to us. Okay, we're always going to be given three pieces of information and then be asked to solve for a fourth. Okay, so if I'm given um, angle A, side A, side B, and it's asking me to find angle B, I would use these two ratios and I'll be able to sub in for side B, side A, angle A, and then solve for angle B. So we can solve any equation that only has one variable. Okay, let's just go ahead and do a question so you can see how this works, okay? Well, first of all, let's clarify when you can use the sine law. Okay, sine law can be used in two instances. Instant one, um, it can be used to find an unknown side, okay? When two angles and a side are known. So if I know two angles and a side, I can use the sine law to find um, another side, okay? Like once again, if you look, I have three pieces of information, I can solve um, for the fourth using two of these ratios, okay? Um, the second instance when you can use the sine law, you can use it to find an unknown angle right here. If two sides, two sides are known, and the angle opposite one of the known sides. So 32, um, side 10 is opposite of angle 32, and I have another side, and I want to find an unknown angle. So those are the two cases you can use the sine law. And remember, you use these with acute triangles, okay? So let's do two examples of finding a side length using the sine law. Okay, so now we're gonna go through this example, okay? So one of the things that you should do before uh, uh, starting, right? Here is your, your sine law, right? A over side A over uh, sine angle A equals to side B over sine angle B equals to side C over sine angle C. So remember, the angle is opposite to the side. So this angle C is opposite to the side C. This angle A is opposite to the side A. This angle B is opposite to this uh, side B, okay? It's important that you label that properly because if you don't, then you're gonna mess up the equation. You're gonna mess up what you're putting in for, for these variables, okay? So we wanna find side C, right? 
side C. So I'm going to write it like this. So side C is up top. And then I'm going to write angle C. And I should have angle C if I have side C. Or yes, I do I have angle C. And angle C is here. And which, which one should I use? It should B or A. Well, I don't have side A. So there's no point putting A up here because I have no side A. I don't know the value of side A. But I do know the value of side B. So I'm going to put B up here. And do I have the angle related to side B? Yes, I do. So here's angle B. So it's going to be sine B. OK? So I have unknowns here, right? So I have, I'm going to put a check mark here. I have the value of B. I have the value of side B or angle B. And I have the value of angle C. So now I can solve for C. Okay. And basically, I'm going to fill in the, the values that I have. So this is going to be side C. And it's important you write in everything in lowercase the way it shows, because that's how you're going to, if you write them in, if I wrote A, or B in uppercase, it doesn't work that way. The sides are always in lowercase and the angles are always in capital, okay? So this would be sine uh, 62 degrees, right? And this would equal to B, so B is 2.5 over the angle B, which is, uh, my bad, I made a mistake over here. That is side C is uh, the angle for C is 52. And over here, the angle for B is 62. Okay. So what I do now is I can, there's, there's different ways to solve it. Like I can just isolate C. So I'm just going to go like this, bring an arrow here and start over. Isolate. So if I isolate C, that means the sine 52 goes over to the other side and it's get multiplied. So C will equal to 2.5 over sine uh, 62 times sine, give myself some space here. Uh, sine uh, 52. So then I do the math of that, and then I get the angle, the value of that, OK? So that's what he's going to do, OK? Uh, and that's how you solve for C, side C, OK? So I'm going to play the video, and we're going to see uh, the answer, OK? But that's the step, 2.5 divided by sine 62 times sine 52, OK? So uh, let us continue the video. OK. So if I want to find the length of side C, OK? So side C is right here. I know it's across from angle C. If I want to find the length of side C, I can use the sine law. Because remember, we can use the sine law to find an unknown side. Okay, it's asking us to find a side. When we know two angles, I know two angles and a side. So I can use the sine law. If this is the sine law, Let's just fill in what, let me just rewrite the sine law here. So I know the ratio of side A. Hey ladies, we all know how hard it is to juggle work, family, and everything in between. Finding time for ourselves, especially at home manicures, can be a challenge. I've been on a quest to find a solution to make my life easier, and I think I found it. I recently tried the Sistaco Deluxe System, and let me tell you, it has completely improved my at home manicure experience, especially with my business. Over the sine of angle A is equal to the ratio of the length of B over sine of angle B, which is equal to the ratio of side C over the sine of angle C. Okay, That's what the sine law tells us. If you want to see a proof of the sine law, uh, I'd be more than happy to post one. Just request it, and I'll post one for you guys to see. Okay. So um, let's just fill in everything we know. So I know this side right here, that's side B, because it's across from angle B. 
I know that side is 2.5. So I'm going to fill that in. That's 2.5. I know angle B is 62. So I can replace B with 62. Okay, B is 62. And I know angle C is 52. Angle C is 52. 52. Okay, hopefully what you always want to happen is you want to get one ratio where you know both pieces of information, the side and the angle. And then there's going to be another ratio where you only know one of the two pieces of information. Like for this one, I know angle C, but I don't know side C. So if we use these two ratios, I could solve for angle C because I know these ratios are supposed to be equivalent according to the sine law. Okay? So it's asked me to find side C. So I, I know I have to use this ratio in order to be able to find side C. And then I'm going to use this ratio because I have nothing unknown here. I know I know side B and I know angle B. Okay, I know those two. So if I use these two ratios, I have three pieces of information given, one unknown. I can solve for side C. Okay, in this case, I'm not interested in the ratio um, of A over sine of angle A. Okay, I don't. Okay, so he went through the process of showing that I don't have enough information for A, which I don't have. That's why I'm using. Uh, 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 B, because I know the side B uh, value and I know the angle B value. Okay, that's what you're showing there. I know the length of side A. I don't know angle A. I could figure out angle A if I wanted to. I'm subtracting these two for 180. But I have no interest in the length of side A because the question asks me nothing about it. Okay, I want to find the length of side C. I can use these two ratios and solve for that. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know that 22.5 over sine of 62 is equal to C over sine 52. Okay? I have two fractions that are equal to each other. I can get rid of these fractions by cross multiplying. Okay? So multiply these two together and put their product on one side of the equal sign. So I get 2.5 sine 52 is equal to, now do the other um, cross product here. So C times sine 62 and put that on the other side of the equal sign. C sine 62, okay? Now to get C by itself, I just have to divide sine 62 to the other side, okay? So I'll get 2.5 sine 52 divided by sine 62 is equal to C. All you do from here, put that in on your calculator. Make sure it's in degree mode. Put this on your calculator. 2.5 sine 52. Make sure you close your bracket. Then divide by sine 62. Okay, so the, the thing that he's showing here in the calculator, you're going to make sure you follow that. Uh, a lot of times people make a mistake on the calculator where they don't close the bracket. If you have a calculator like this, and then you divide, but then you're dividing the number that's in the angle. So you got to make sure if you're putting an angle, you, it has a bracket in front of it. That means you have to have a closed bracket. If you don't do that, you're going to have wrong answers. Close your bracket. Okay, equals 2.2 if I round it to the nearest tenth. So C equals 2.2. Okay, and that's that question done. Okay, let's do another one so you can get the hang of. Um, figuring out which ratios to use. Okay, So let's take a look at this one here. It's asking me to find the length of side A. Okay, It wants me to find this length here, side A. I've got two angles and a side, so I know I can use the sine law to solve for the unknown side. Okay, This one's going to require a little bit of extra work, <coughs> but instead of just telling you what we have to do, um, I'm going to fill in what we know, and try. we'll try and intuitively see what we have to do here. Okay, So, um, I don't know the length of side A, but I know angle A. So I know A over the sine of angle A, which is 54, is equal to the ratio of B. I don't know B over sine of angle B. Angle B is 46. Okay. And that's equal to um, the length of C, which is 11, 
over sine of angle C. Okay? So if we remember from before, we always need one ratio that has both pieces of information. And in this one you'll see none of these have both pieces of information um, filled in. So there's no... Okay, so, so in this case here, right, you can go through this process where you write all, all out and see what you're, what you're missing. The key is you got to solve for A. So you need to, you got to make sure you have, a, a, for side A, you should have the angle A, which you do, but you don't have any other, you, you don't have things that would help you to solve. Uh, for example, side B, there's not, there's no side B missing, right? Let me, uh, Fix that. All right, so side B is missing. Okay. Don't have it. Uh, and then angle C, you don't have. But you have side C. Okay. So the best way to solve this is, uh, well, I need to find side A. I know side C. I'm going to use side C. I don't have angle C, but I can figure it out because all the angles in the triangle should add up to 180, right? So I can figure out what angle C is. So angle C would be, would be, or right here, capital, would be 180 minus 46 minus 54. Okay? That would be the answer for C. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, all C. I'm going to use a side C and angle C, right? And I can then I can solve for A. That's what I'm going to use here. So two ratios we can choose um, that will only have one piece of missing information. If I choose these two, I'll have two unknowns still. If I choose these two, I'll have two unknowns. And if I choose one with A and one with C there's still two unknowns. So I can't solve for any of those, okay? So let's just think about this. It's asking me to find the length of side A. I need to eventually be able to find side A. So you think you know Wix, but do you really? First up, we've got shape video. Okay, so I have to eventually use this ratio. Now I can figure out which other of these ratios can I use with it. Well, both of these have an unknown. Um, can I figure out either of these unknowns? Can I figure out the length of side B? No, I can't figure out the length of side B. But I can figure out angle C because I know the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. I know two of the, two of the angles, therefore I can find the third. I know angle C, angle C is equal to 180 minus 46 minus 54 okay and that gives me 80 degrees so I know angle C is 80 degrees okay 80 good now I have a ratio with both pieces of information um, that are that are known okay so if I use that ratio along with the ratio that has our unknown A involved okay, if I use these two ratios I have three known pieces of information and one unknown. So I can solve for that unknown. So let's go ahead and do that. So I know A over sine of 54 equals 11 over sine 80. Get rid of the fractions, I cross multiply. So do A times sine 50, that gives me A sine, oh, sine 80, sorry, A sine 80. Put that on one side of the equal sign, then do the other cross product here. 11 times sine 54 gives me 11 times sine 54. Okay. To get A by itself, I'm going to divide the sine 80 to the other side. So 11 sine 54 divided by sine of 80. Put that on your calculator. Let the calculator do the work. So I know 11 sine 54, close my bracket. Make sure you close your bracket there. 11 sine 54 divided by sine 80. 
equals 9.03. Round that to the nearest tenth, it's just 9.0. There's my answer right there. So A is 9.0. So this one required a little bit of extra work. We just had to find angle C. Yeah, so again, you, you just need to find using the angle. Uh, 180 minus all the other angles will give you the other angle, okay? So that is how you use uh, the sine law to calculate the angle, okay? So, or sorry, using the sine law to calculate the side of a, of a acute triangle. Now we're gonna look at how to calculate, uh, let me, using the sine law, to calculate the unknown angle. So this is a little bit tricky because you're gonna have to use inverse sine. So we're gonna go through this video. If you had a choice, would you rather pay $12 for this cheese grater on Amazon or pay less than $2 on Alibaba for the exact same thing? Well, believe it or not, over... See how we use um, the sine law to find a missing angle. You do it very similarly, okay? So if I ask you to find angle V... Okay, so right off the bat, you're still going to set up your angles. You're still going to set up your formula like this, okay? And then you have to figure out Okay, either I have to find, you know, angle A or angle B or angle C, okay? So in this case, they wrote it, didn't write it as A, B, and C, they wrote it as T, U, V, but it doesn't matter because the same process still works, right? So if this is angle B, okay? This is little, this is the side, and this is going to be side V, and it's little V, okay? That's supposed to be a little V. And this is angle U, this is supposed to be, and that's capital U, this is supposed to be small u, okay? And this is uh, angle T, this is going to be side T, and I'm going to put a little t, okay? What I want to find is angle V, okay? So the same uh, process goes. So the only thing different is I can write it, instead of writing it A over sine A, I can write them the other way around, right? I can write them, I can write it like this. I'm not sure if he's gonna tell you that, but you can write the same thing. You can write like this. Okay, come on. Okay, you can write it like this. It's still the same formula even though I put the angles up top. And it's the same, because it's the same ratio, right? So you can write it like this, like we, or you can write it like this. But if I write it like this, now my, what I need to find is on the numerator. So it makes things a little bit cleaner, right? So, and easier to write, uh, to solve. So I'm gonna write my V. So I'm gonna have sine capital V, which I'm trying to find over, uh, side B, okay, which is little b. And what do I have that I can use? I can use that I have the side and angle for. Looks like I have side T and angle T. So I'm going to use that to solve. So I'm going to put here sine angle T over side T. So that's what I'm going to use to solve for angle V. So now I'm going to put the numbers I know. So sine V over side B, side B is 11.1. .1. And then sine T, T is 31 degrees over uh, side T, which is 5.8, okay? So I have those things. So I'm gonna isolate for sine B. So I'm gonna have here sine V equals to side sine 31 divided by 5.8 times. So I bring that 11.1 over to the other side, I multiply it. So it's gonna be times 11.1, .1, okay? So 
I'm almost there. I'm going to get a number here. But then in the end, I, I need to still find the angle of V, but I have a sign in front of it. So I have to remove that sign to isolate for V. So how do I do that? I have to take that sign and bring it over to the other side and it becomes inverse sign. So I'm going to inverse sign this whole entire thing. So I'm going to have V by itself over here. So it's going to be like this, V is by itself. And I'm going to do inverse sign. So this is inverse, that's what that means. And this whole thing, sine 31 divided by 5.8 times 11.1, .1. okay? All this, I do an inverse sine and I'll get my, my angle V, okay? So my angle V is gonna to equal to all this, okay? So this part here, I could have did I could have did it separately. I could have divided this out and times this and get a number over here and I'll get a decimal number and then bring over the inverse sign. Okay. So we're gonna go through what he shows you, but this is the step here. Okay. I probably gonna have to clear my screen now, but let's go through that anyways. So I'll clear it anyways. So if I ask you to find angle V. Okay, um, I remember that we can use the sine law to find an unknown angle if, we, if two sides are known, two sides are known, and the angle opposite one of the sides is known. Angle 31 is opposite, um, 5.8. Good, so I can use the sine law. So here, let's not get thrown by the fact that we don't have the letters A, B, and C. Okay, I'm going to rewrite the sine law with our new letters. What the, all the sine law tells us is the ratio of a side to the sine of its opposite angle uh, is equal for each side, okay? So I know that V, the length of side V, over the sine of angle V is equal to the length of T, okay? Here's length of T over the sine of angle T, which is equal to the length of U divided by the sine of angle U. Okay. It doesn't matter which order you write these in. The important thing is that all of these are just equal to each other, these three ratios. Let's plug in what we know now. Okay. So I know that um, angle T is 31. I know angle T is 31. I know I don't know angle U. I don't know angle V. Okay. I know side V. Side V is 11.1. So I'll get rid of side V there. Side V is 11.1. And I know side T. Side T is 5.8. 5.8. OK, awesome. So I need to find angle V. So I have to use the ratio with angle V in there. And then the other ratio I'm going to use is the one that has both pieces of information subbed in. Okay? So this one here, I know. Um, I know side T and I know angle T, so if I use this ratio in combination with this ratio, I have three known pieces of information, one unknown, I can solve for that unknown. So let's set these ratios equal to each other, 11.1 .1 over sine V equals 5.8 over sine 31. Okay, get rid of the fractions by cross multiplying. So do 11.1 .1 times sine 31, 11.1 .1 sine 31, that's equal to the other cross product of 5.8 times the sine. So he's showing you, you know, steps that are a little bit different than how I showed you, but still it didn't get to the same thing, okay? He's showing cross multiplying. Uh, it's the same process, which, I mean, you still got to multiply, and then he's going to, he's, now he's going to isolate. Uh, he's going to isolate the 5.8. He's, he's going to isolate sine B. So watch. Uh, v. Okay. Now I want to get sine V by itself. I'm going to. Right. So sine V gets isolated. So it's going to come over to the other side. So it's still the same thing which I wrote before 11.1 .1 times sine 31 divided by 5.8. Okay. So let me just kind of fast forward that. There you go. Okay. And then he's going to go through the process of putting that in this calculator. You can see up there. And you're going to get some kind of answer here. All right? So this is where I was saying you can, you can divide all this out first and then 
do the inverse sign. So he got an answer of 0.985 uh six seven six three one five eight which is gonna write over here okay and so on now he's gonna do the inverse sign so let him talk about the inverse sign on a calculator is equal to this number right here in order to find angle v i have to do the inverse sign of that big long number so the inverse sign Remember, we use inverse sine to find um, angles. Okay, inverse sine of 0 0.98, and so on. Okay, but we're going to use that whole um, that whole number. We're not going to round it because we want our answer to be as accurate. So the key is the, the reason why uh, you have to write the whole thing. If you just write down 0.98 and then your inverse sine, you're not going to get the exact angle. That's why you have to write the whole thing. Or like what I did, I didn't write the whole thing. I just basically kept it inside a bracket and then did the inverse of this whole entire thing, which is the same thing as this decimal number. And that's how you get the most accurate answer. If you just if you just divide this out, multiply this out here, and then you and you know you get a long decimal, number, but you only put down, you know, you only put down say 0 0.9856, that's it you put down, your answer is not going to be as accurate. You may be off a little bit, okay? So he's gonna punch down his calculator. It's possible, okay? Never round before you get to your final answer, okay? So in order to not round it, what I'm going to do from here, I'm not gonna erase that answer yet. I need that my calculator to know that's my answer. I'm going to do second sign, that brings up inverse sign of that answer. So I press second negative that puts in answer. So the inverse sign of that answer is 80.3 once so I round it to the nearest tenth. Okay. So angle V equals 80.3 degrees. Never round until you get to your final answer. Okay. Okay, so that's what you do for finding the unknown angle. Okay. Because of time, we're gonna go into uh basically we're just gonna do more practice stuff which I think you guys can do on your own here. Uh, we're gonna go into the cosine law. Cosine law is a little bit more complicated, so let's go into that. So the cosine law to find uh, the unknown sides. So we're gonna watch this one. Okay, here's a lesson on section 8.2 using the cosine law. So we're continuing with chapter 8, um, trigonometry of acute triangles. And section 8.1, we learned about the sine law, which you can use to help solve for unknown sides or angles of an acute triangle. Um, so here I've drawn a unit. So let's try that again. Okay, here's a lesson on section 8.2 using the cosine law. So we're continuing with chapter 8, um, trigonometry of acute triangles. And section 8.1, we learned about the sine law, which you can use to help solve for unknown sides or angles of an acute triangle. Um, today we're going to learn about the cosine law, um, which is useful in two scenarios when working with acute triangles, and I'll explain those in just a second. Okay, um, so first of all, this is the cosine law right here. There are three equations we can use depending on what is given to us. Um, in the question and what we're looking for. Similar to the sine law where we had three ratios, okay? So this three isn't just an arbitrary number, of course. Um, you might think there are three equations we could use here because there are three sides in a triangle, three angles in a triangle, okay? So depending what side we're looking for or what angle we're looking for, that depends on what equation we're going to use. Just like with the sine law, there are three ratios of sides over the sine of the angle because there are three sets of sides and angles, okay? So before I explain this cosine law any further, um, I'm just gonna explain to you when we can use it, so hopefully you can um, make sense of it as I explain it, okay? If you guys wanna see a proof for the cosine law, I would be more than happy to show you guys one. Um, just let me know and I'll post one, okay? So like I said, there are two scenarios you can use the cosine law, okay? when working with acute triangles. Remember, we're not working with right angle triangles anymore. Right angle triangles, you use SOHCAHTOA. Um, you can't use SOHCAHTOA with acute triangles. 
acute triangles, we can only use our sine law and cosine law. Okay? So, when can we use the cosine law? Two scenarios. Today we're going to be looking at just the first scenario. Okay? You can use the cosine law to find a missing side of an acute triangle if the other two sides and their contained angle are known. So if I know... Okay, so this is the one scenario where you can use the cosine law. And you can't use the sine law, right? I have a, a side and an angle and a side. Okay, a side and an angle and a side. So when I have it like this, where this angle is in between these two sides, I have no choice but to use the cosine law. I can't use the sine law. I cannot use the sine law. It won't work. Why it won't work? Because this is why it won't work, okay? I have my angle A. I don't have angle A, okay? Uh, but I have, you know, side A. I have angle B, and angle B is the only other angle I have here, okay? So if that's the case, I can't, if angle B is the only other angle I have, I cannot use, it's going to be tough to use a sine law because I'm missing two angles. Plus, uh, the angles that are missing, which is A and C, correspond with side the sides that I have. That means I can't use I cannot use that ratio. I cannot use sine law. It won't work because there's too many unknowns here. Things don't line up. So the only thing I can use is the cosine law. Okay, so this is why I use the cosine law. And the other scenario, which is the bottom here, is where I have no angles, okay? Right? So I need to find an angle of three sides, and I have no angles in here. All I have are the three sides. That's all I know. Right? So let, ex let him explain so you can hear both explanations, mine and his. Two sides of a triangle. I know this side. I know this side. And I know the angle contained by those two sides. So the angle between the angle at the vertex of the two known sides. Okay, so if I know the contained angle and I'm looking for the other side, the triangle, the only one that I don't know, okay, I can use the cosine law. Okay, so let's look at this cosine law here. So I'm looking for, okay, if angle B is here, this is side B. If I'm looking for side B, I would choose the equation that has side B at the, at the beginning, okay? I'm looking for side B. I know side A, okay? I know side C, okay? Side A and side C. I know the other two sides. I don't know side B, but I know the other two. So I can plug in for there, 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 and there. And then I know the contained angle. The angle contained by side A and C is angle B. I know angle B. Okay, so this is the reason why I use the cosine law, right? So I know the angle, I know side A, I know side C, and this is also uh, side A, side C, and I know angle B, okay? So I can use the cosine law to figure out what is the side of, uh, of V, okay? So I can plug in for every variable except for side B and solve for that unknown variable, okay? If I was looking for side A and I knew sides B and C and the angle contained by B and C, which would be angle A, I would use this, oops, or I would use this top equation here. Okay? So it depends on what side you know. Um, yeah, it depends what side you're looking for and what sides you know. That depends on, on which of these equations you're going to use. But make sure, um, when, when you're choosing to use the cosine law, make sure you know two sides and a contained angle. Or like we'll learn tomorrow, make sure you know all three sides and you're looking for a contained angle, okay? If you, if you look at the cosine law, you can see why that would work. Because if we don't know an angle, but we know the other three sides, I know A, B, and C, okay? I can plug in for all the known sides, and my only variable left would be the angle. I could solve for the angle. Okay. Um, and also one more thing before we get started. We'll do a couple examples. Um, before we do those examples, though, don't get bogged down with um, the letters here, A, B, and C. Triangles aren't always going to be labeled A, B, and C, but that doesn't mean that the cosine law doesn't work. 
Exactly what he just said there. It's we know it's not going to label A, B, and C, right? But you have to understand the concept of right of how you use this, right? If I'm trying to solve for A, that means I have angle. If I'm trying to find side A, that means I have this side and this side, and then these two sides multiply each other, and I must have the angle A. Okay, so that same concept. If say say it was, let me write a, let me write it like this because we want to see different examples, right? Say, say I call this, uh, come on, pen work, please. Let me use a different color. Say I call this one, I call this Z, Y, and X. Say, say I do that, right? Come on, X. Okay, so now, I would I would still do the same thing. I'm trying to find, you know, this would be side y, so it'd be little y, right? So the same the same formula applies, right? And this would be angle angle y. So the same formula applies where I would write it over here. I'm trying to find y, so it'd be y squared. Y squared is equal to those other sides, and this is little z. Right, I didn't write little z, little z, little z, and this is little x. Okay, so it would be the other side squared. Okay, uh, and then it would multiply each other, so it would be x times uh, z, and then I would have to have my cos of my angle at y. Okay, so it works the same way. Okay, so don't don't get caught up on you know the letters are A B C. It could be any kind of letters. Okay, uh, as long as you follow the process. So let us continue. Like let's say our triangle was triangle and D E F. Okay, what the cosine law tells us if we know um, two of the sides, okay, so if I know these two, I know side D and side F, and I'm looking for side E. The hottest thing in science is here and it's free. This field of science is getting people rich. There's been quite a break. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's fast forward to an example. He's just telling me, he's just showing you what I just did there. So let's just go ahead. A little bit here. Okay. So we're solving this example. Okay. And it's saying find the missing length. The missing length is A, right? So this is very straightforward. If it's very straightforward, that means you have side B and side C already. So you can use this one here. So I'm going to fast forward that. That's very straightforward, right? You're looking for the missing side, which is A. So you can use that equation, right? Very straightforward. Okay. So you plug in your values. All right. And then you're going to plug in the calculator. So which we can we, we can all do that and get your value. Okay. So now you're going to square root that answer. And then you get, and always, like I said, don't round until the very end. Right? Don't round to the very end. So here you can put you put down the whole answer and then you round when you square root it. Uh, at the very end, right? So the answer is gonna be what was it, 19.9 and you round up to 20. It's fine, 20 centimeters. Okay. So here is another missing length, which is B. Right. So again, you're gonna use this angle, this equation in the middle here. I want to go to an example where you use a different uh, numbers or different letters. Okay, so let's use this one here. This one here, you can see D E F, right? So I need to find the missing, the missing side, which is D right here. Okay, so if that's the case, if we if we are trying to find side D. 
Okay, so my formula, so let's just write everything out. This is little f for side f. This is little e for side e. So, and this is the angle d, which we need to find uh, side d. So if you're writing the, the, the formula for this, this would be d squared is equal to the two other sides squared. So f squared plus e squared. And then I uh, multiply those two, f two times f times e. And then I have cos of my angle d. OK, that would be the formula to solve for that, because you know all those values. And the only thing you don't know is uh, side d. OK, so let me, uh, let me move that off the side and I'll play the video. Oops, that's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's play the video. Triangle ABC. Um, what happened here? It's not what I try to do. So um, the cosine law is still relevant just because the three general equations we're given have, um, are assuming the triangle is labeled A, B, and C. We can generalize this formula to make a cosine law um, for this question here. Before I jump to any conclusions, though, I should just determine whether we're actually going to use the cosine law. Okay? Find the missing side length. So I need to find side D. I'm given the other two sides and their contained angle. I know in that situation I use the cosine law to find the third side. So I'm looking for side D. So to find side D, I know the unknown side squared is equal to the two known sides. The squares of the two known sides add them together. So 4.7 squared plus 3.3 squared minus double the product of the two known sides. 3.3. Oh, that was an ugly 3.3. 4.7 times 3.3 times the cosine of the contained angle, 39. Okay, so I just generalized that equation. To find the unknown side, okay, I find the sum of the squares of the two known sides, okay, and I subtract double the product of the two known sides and multiply um, it by the cosine of the contained angle. I then put all this on my calculator, okay, and let's see what we get. So 4.7 squared plus 3.3 squared, 3.3 squared minus 2 times 4. Okay, so we go through the process and we get the angle, the answer, and that's the, the side, 3.0. Okay, uh, let me clear this. I know we're going over the time because uh, some of you guys may have things to do afterwards. So we're gonna stop here, okay? Uh, do not leave yet because I have to, well, you guys can leave. Let me just, uh, before you leave, but just hold off. I'm gonna stop recording.